Right, earlier next week, earlier this week, my next two guests got married. One of them, one of them is one of our most well-known newsreaders, the other a psychotherapist who is currently battling post-polio syndrome. I'm really delighted to have them both here tonight. Please welcome newsreader Michael Murphy and his partner Terry O'Sullivan. <laughs> Thanks indeed. Did you have a great day? I saw the well, pictures in the Did paper. you see the pictures? Yeah, it was gorgeous. a wonderful day. It was, it was the only sunny day, which was Tuesday, <laughs> and uh, it was filled with warmth and happiness and goodwill. It, it was an extraordinary day. Yes, and I did. love the invite. Was it to, you invited them to not a wedding, is that correct? That's right, to not a wedding, right? <laughs> it's a civil union. Yeah. And it was so good, I'd love everyone in the country to have been there that day, right? The joy and the, the whole experience was something I will never forget. And I hope, I know other people will never forget yeah, it, our guests. Yeah. Were you both very emotional? Michael, I think you were more Yes, I was very that. emotional. It was extraordinary after 26 years, finally to be uh, allowed to publicly say that this is my partner. And yes. uh, yeah. it was a very important day, a day of consequence for us. I suppose I would be considered a type of cool cucumber. <laughs> and um, I, I think I held it together until um, a former client of mine from about 35 years ago um, spoke about his experience of me and he was there with his wife and that was it for me. The emotions just flowed and it was just wonderful. Everything was appropriate. Um, I didn't have any mascara on, thank yes, God. It didn't. <laughs> so there were a lot of smudge marks uh, that day. Where did you both first meet? I was uh, a producer director here for years, so I had an outside broadcast unit up at the Rutland Centre and I was doing a programme called Access and over a period of three long days, travel on the Monday, three 12 hour days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I was able to observe Terry in action. Because you couldn't film the clients, mm -hmm. uh, all of you worked there, didn't you? Sure yes, you yes. worked yes. as a psychotherapist. Yes. And because you couldn't mm -hmm. film the clients, uh, the staff pretended they were uh, mm -hmm. in, in treatment yes. and Terry was the, uh, well, uh, the group coordinator. Yes. So I was able to yeah. view him. Mm -hmm. As a producer director, you're, you're very concerned with what's in frame mm. and you you develop a, a sixth sense you know exactly what a person is like so over three days I was able to assess Terry see his integrity how truthful he was and uh, I realized that I could entrust my life to this man and made a decision just a decision like you know I don't want that boom and shot out of, you know <laughs> I wanted to spend my life with Terry and afterwards there was a mm. dinner when everybody got yeah. together and celebrated the program and uh, I made sure I was sitting beside him. Yes. And did you know he was feeling this way towards you? No, I didn't. I didn't at all, Miriam. It was a complete surprise to me. I suppose I was taken up uh, trying to give the best uh, uh, presentation of the Rutland Centre and what it meant mm. uh, um, to all of us. And uh, so it was, you grew on me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I suppose the first thing I noticed about Michael is that he has a very busy mind. Mm. And, uh, great voice. A great voice yeah. and a very, very busy mind indeed. What's and a busy mind? Well, always a very inquiring mind, you know, mm. academically very brilliant and uh, a wonderful psychoanalyst. Uh, and uh, that would be my background as well, right? In but you know what's interesting? Like you're mm. together 26 years. Yes. But like yeah. when you would yeah. have got together 26 years ago as a gay couple, yeah. this was a very different place. It was almost mm. a different country. Mm. I mean, have you've seen so much changes. Was it much more difficult 26 years ago to be very public about your relationship? Well, from my personal perspective, I suppose I was involved in uh, gay politics right from the word go. You know, in Trinity College, we set mm. up the first uh, forum of the Irish Gay Rights Movement and we set up a, um, um, a health and information centre. That's way back in the 70s. Yeah. It seems like another Ireland. Yeah. And um, I also was 
reared in a, in a family that was bohemian in a sense. So my mum and my dad were, I couldn't say they were cool about it. If they had any concerns and worries about me and my life, well, they didn't really make it known to the, no, they wanted to inform themselves about what that meant to be. But because I had been in Germany and I was, uh, um, uh, I was used to Germany, I was used to the Netherlands, I knew that there was another way of being in the, you know, in the world with liber more liberal laws and, and so forth. So we're arriving at this point now in this wonderful little republic of ours, yeah. which is very is, and is good the sweet to thing say. is you lived quite near Micheál McLeamore, didn't you, when you I grew certainly up? Did, did that yes. have an influence on you? Well, it didn't have so much an influence on me, but I do remember my mum, yeah. uh, you know, saying, you know, good morning, Dr. Liamor and he'd say good morning Mrs O'Sullivan and there was a code unspoken you know that mm. well you that man was a little bit different because he walked around um, our locality in full makeup uh, he was an actor yeah. uh, fedora <laughs> and cape so he Amazing. was he was different <laughs> yeah. so we had a lot of very interesting people very different characters and, uh, and you grew up in yeah. hatch street i grew up right. in hatch yeah. street our yeah. house was just directly opposite university hall yeah. so it was an unusual and interesting and very nice place to grow up what about your background michael i mean was it difficult in your family to come out and say you were gay way back when uh, i don't think so i was thinking about this before i came on and and mm. uh, uh, my mother had a conversation with me, these conversations that mothers have in yeah. the kitchen with their sons. How so, old uh, might you have been uh, at this time? I was 50. I was 50. 50? Yes, 50. <laughs> okay. And, and, and my mother suddenly said, I, I think these conversations are disappearing from Irish kitchens, but she said, Michael, you know, I'm very disturbed that you're not going to Sunday Mass. And I, you know, I began to stir it a little. I said, Mum, I wouldn't darken the door of a church with their homophobic attitudes and all the rest of it. And she said something I didn't understand it at first, but then the penny dropped. She said, Michael, that's complete nonsense. And everybody knows it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. And anyway, it's got to change. You've had the privilege of a very expensive education. You should know better. <laughs> and that was the end of it. And she never mentioned yeah, it again. That's yeah. really interesting, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you both, I mean, the decision, obviously, to marry, whether it's a civil partnership mm. or a wedding, we won't mm. get into that. That's for a prime time discussion. <laughs> but you've both had adversity in your lives. Like, you, you, well, you got polio as a little boy, didn't you? I did you? indeed, yes. How yeah. old were you when you got polio? I was five years of age. It was the last epidemic in Ireland I, I was affected uh, by the... Polio, and know. had it affected your life much? No, it, it did. It, certainly it informed me. Uh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. And in those days, you had to go to hospital for a long time. So I was in hospital for two years. And I suppose my first cognitive memory was of being on my mother's lap in um, their bedroom, my parents' bedroom, uh, screaming, um, uh, uh, holding on to her, asking her not to let the nurse take me away. Because in those days, a green ambulance arrived for you if you had a a notifiable disease, which polio was. I mean, it was a killer disease, and mm. I was very lucky to live and survive and so on. But I was like the walking wounded, Miriam, and uh, I even disco danced like a dervish. I usually <laughs> fell, but I danced. Yeah, uh, but then about, was it eight, nine, ten years ago or so, um, a diagnosis of post-polio fatigue syndrome was made on me. 30% of people who had polio originally go on to develop this late stage effect so um, at this point, I'm uh, motoring around on a mixture of my Cripple Fabulous uh, 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 stick, um, a, ro a walking aid and a wheelchair. So I keep moving as best I can. Yeah, and you so, look really well. You look very healthy. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I have a good attitude towards it, a positive and... And obviously Michael it. is very important in that because I his love... Yeah. yeah, I couldn't do it without Michael. I really couldn't. He is just superb, wonderful, wonderful, caring, Thank kind you. person. And also, Michael, of course, you've written at length and spoken about your own prostate cancer. Do you yeah. think when you were faced with that diagnosis of cancer, did that make you more want to have the civil partnership, this wedding with Terry? Oh, it, it did, Miriam. I suddenly yeah. realised that if, mm. if yeah. I had died, Terry would not automatically own uh, mm. my half of the apartment. Mm. And uh, our wills could be challenged because mm. Terry was not next of kin. Now I ha hasten to add that in the hospital he was always treated as, as next of kin. Mm. But legally he wasn't. Mm. No, and right, that no. could be challenged. Mm. Yeah. So we felt that as soon mm. as the civil partnership uh, came out, the legislation came out, mm. we should do this uh, as a matter of, of, of importance.
Yeah. And the emotion of the day, I know, was it coloured? Because you had a brother you loved and you called Kieran, who, and right. he was uppermost in your mind. Was He died of cancer, didn't he? He, he did indeed, yeah. I invoked him actually on the day. I said a prayer to Key to, 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 to bring okay. me through. Uh, I, I know that you, again, you had a sister who died from cancer. So uh, the pain of that never goes away. It, mm. it, it sorts of recedes into the background, but still it, it is as alive. It stays, it stays there and I invited as him. As it should. Yeah, I invited him to uh, our, our celebration celebration on the day, so I'm sure he'll Well, look, fine is, he, we started off celebrating. <coughs> You're the most emotional one, maybe a little bit more. You're probably just as emotional, but he's more obviously emotional, would I, we say? Uh, well, in general, I suppose, in truth, uh, in our normal lives, I, I'd imagine I'm more emotional. Is he more romantic? Yeah. Uh, yes. Right, oh, yeah. definitely. Undoubtedly. Because you Undoubtedly. wrote a poem, didn't you? Oh, I did. And yeah, you're I going did, to read yeah. for us to close well, uh, this. Right. Bit. You're going to okay. read a little bit of that poem for us, yeah. would you? It's, it's a poem for Terry. Uh, uh, is it all right if I do that? Yeah, we discussed it and we'd like to, yes, uh, dedicate it to men and women of good uh, will in this country, but I suppose most importantly to people who might be a little bit challenged by what we're doing here because okay. I think they need it a little bit more than the rest of us. So, okay, well, uh, that's nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, just, just, yeah. just read a little from, from will I stand? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. From the, yeah, yeah, okay. On that laughing summer's day, the wind was cheering and the leaves on the trees were waving as we processed towards our future through O'Connell Street. Side by side, we laid our bouquet of roses out at the GPO, acknowledged those who gave their lives so we could be cherished equally, proclaimed ourselves free, and free to become better together than either of us could choose to achieve on our own. And we withdrew relevance from those who disapproved of our new and mutual republic of love. And they will sing out loud my song, repeat publicly the poem I have told about you and the treasure you endowed me with, the inestimable adventure of a meaningful life. This simple shining truth shall belong to you immortally, that once upon a time, on a Dublin midsummer's day, at noon, I always loved you. Oh, that's so good. Thank you. That's so lovely. Thank you. Oh. So lovely. Thank you. It's an extraordinary thing to, an extraordinary experience to have a poem written for you yeah. by such a wonderful writer. And Michael is a great Irish writer, very proud that a, an Irish man writes like he does. Beautiful, and, and for you, Terry. Continue. I, and thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you Thanks, for reading. Thank Terry. you for sharing with us. Mm -hmm. And um, may you be happy for the next 50 years together. Okay? We'll go Thank for you. it. Go sure for it. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Live Thank you. Very many <laughs> times to be. You're very kind. No, you're Thank, you so Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. No, Okay, listen, join me in a few minutes when well-known lawyer Gerald Keane is going to tell us how he and his fiancée Lisa are coping with life after an horrific and very violent robbery at their Wicklow home. Join us in a few moments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, Dan, Mick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, two, two. One, two, go, good. good.